Hello, I'm John Hartledge. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about Riesling, and I can't believe I haven't talked about it yet. My cousin Mark, who's also in the wine industry, asked me to talk about the grape, famous grape. So we're gonna talk about uh, a very famous village, a very famous vineyard, and we're gonna talk about Riesling. Without further ado, let's chat wine. So, I'm not gonna need my corkscrew. I'm not gonna need my aerator. I have a feeling this wine's gonna pour in the glass ready to go. Uh, and I have used an aerator on white wines before, but I just love to have them at the ready. Of course, I'm gonna use my spit bucket. I wanna keep my head and make sure that I don't fall over on camera because Riesling is so easy to drink. I tend to just have a little bit more than I should, but sometimes, you know, when something tastes good, more is good. But more isn't always the best thing for you. So I will use the spit bucket and be a good taster and good pro wine person. So notice I did uh, um, twist, uh, twist off cap. And as I said, a very famous village, Peace Porter. So the beautiful thing about German labels, traditional German labels, is that you have a producer name. You have the village, which is Peace Port. You know, the Peace Porter. Uh, but the Peace Port is the actual village. You have the vineyard, and this, in this case, it's Goldtropfkin. You also find in the green bottle Peace Porter Michaelsburg or Michaelsburg. But Goldtropfkin is the is the vineyard, so it's a single vineyard. Uh, the grape, which is Riesling, and the time when it was picked. So it's a, a quality, uh, a quality, and a, a quantifier, if you will, of style this Spätlese, and there are a number of these words, and they all refer to when you're picked, uh, your grapes are picked, because the grape picking uh, is all about ripeness, and the later you wait to pick the grape, the sweeter that grape is at the time that it's picked, so you end up with a slightly sweeter wine. The first is Cabinet, the next is Spätlese, the next is Auslese, then there's Baron Auschleser, and then you go to ice wine. When the wines, when the grapes tend to freeze on the vine, and you can actually make a, a wine out of that, uh, out of that frozen, uh, out of those frozen grapes. It's amazing. It's a very famous dessert wine. I'm sure you've heard of ice wine. Uh, Canada makes ice wine too, but it originated in these areas uh, of Europe. Uh, but Germans are so specific with their labeling, you can really identify exactly almost on a map where this grape was produced uh, because they've given you the vineyard. Uh, the Moselle region is named after one of the, a uh, couple of the famous rivers. So the Nahe, N-A-H-E, uh, and the Moselle both feed into and join up with the Rhine River. And the Rhine is probably the most famous, Rhineland. Uh, Germany at times is even referred to as Rhineland. Uh, but uh, the Moselle is this one famous river, so they name the, the wine growing region Moselle and then Rhine. Now, traditionally, the bottles, the color of the bottles and the labels would tell you a lot about this particular grape and how it was produced. For me, the brown bottle, which is traditionally from the Rhine, uh, would give me kind of a red apple kind of uh, flavor profile, where the green bottle, or the Moselle would give me a little bit of a green apple. And that's how I, in my tasting experience, that's how I kind of remembered them. And of course the label, everything is right out there. And um, uh, what's interesting is uh, because of the internet, because of social media, because of Google, because of marketing, international marketing, the German producers have really embraced um, uh, marketing and art, uh, artistic uh, approach to labeling where you'll have the same information because the government of Germany, uh, just like the governing body of Italian wine, the governing body of French wine, have said that you have to have this information on the label. Most of it will be on the back label. So we get a zoom in uh, on that back label. You'll see a lot of that same information. But now, uh, as you'll see in a little cutaway that, that we've got, you'll see a couple other labels of two other wines that I really like from Germany. One is the Clean Slate, also from Moselle, and Dr. Lozen's wines, that's L-O-O-S-E-N. Uh, Dr. Lozen's Riesling, also from the Moselle. Excellent values, beautiful delivery in the glass, uh, but I really wanted to highlight the uh, Goldtrofkin, one I really like to say, Goldtrofkin. 
um, German phonetics are uh, are astounding. I just I love how uh, how all of the vowels and the consonants works. It it, it looks like um, it, you know the the classic stereotype is that. I'm gonna go, and there's a German word. <laughs> but no, it's not. There's a, actually a beautiful music to the German language. Uh, Peace Porter, Goldtropfchen, I sound a little Irish on that. Riesling, Spätlese. Beautiful uh, description of what is in this, uh, what is in this bottle. And a very, very famous Leonard Kreusch, uh, the producer, uh, well, this particular producer. Very interesting. You've got vineyard wine, so he did not grow these grapes. He's buying, because there are other uh, Peace Porter, Gold Trofkin producers. So he's buying uh, grapes from the Gold Trofkin vineyard producer, and he's making the wine, okay? Different than other wines we've talked about. We've talked about wines that are negociant wines, where a, a purveyor, very common in Burgundy, where a purveyor will buy finished wine and label it under their label because they selected it. So it's very interesting aspects to the wine industry that date way back to the tradition of uh, marketing and supplying wine. So I'm going to taste a little. I want to smell a little bit of this. It, I noticed the glass. There's a beautiful little small combined, tight, like a tight net glass that doesn't allow air to get to it too much and then to lose because it's a very bright uh, and very light wine. Typically... Six and a half to nine percent alcohol, very interesting. Uh, but what's really interesting to me is that they're sweet, especially from the Moselle and the Spätlese. Well, it's supposed to be sweet, but it's so much great acidity, it balances it. And like I said, remember, I said malic acid, this little almost green apple acid. Yeah, so there's a little, this little bit of apple aromatic, but also, it's gonna sound strange, but this has everything to do with, again, with geography. So I'm sure there's been a cutaway to a map and maybe we cut away to a cutaway one more time. Very common in Germany is the slate content of the soil. Now, Germany's cold. How do you grow grapes there? Well, part of the reason is the slate in the soil, two functions. One, takes the sunlight that's down and heats, it, heats the vineyard, uh, the vines from underneath. It's amazing. So you've actually heated that during the daytime and then of course cools way down. So grapes love a warmer temperature during the day and then a lighter temperature at night. So the slate in the soil has a lot to do with this. Second function, that slate does not allow the soil to hold onto a lot of that water which is supplied by that Moselle or that Rhine River. So that, that you get good drainage, that means you stress the vines. Once again, as we've talked about before, if you can stress that grape and you make those uh, the, the roots work for their water, you end up with better fruit. Ah, and of course there's a little bit of honeysuckle. Of course I'm getting that slight bit of apple in the background. Now the apple's gonna come out more, I think, on the palate. But here's the interesting part. If you've ever taken a fresh bag, this is gonna sound really strange, of rubber bands, and you open the rubber bands, that first little whoosh of aromatic that comes out of the rubber band bag, that is kind of the aromatic you get from a slate. They refer to it many times in the wine industry as petrol. Now, I always have a problem with too much pe petrol, but if just a little bit of petrol, that, not gasoline, but, but rubber, just that slight amount, and it can come off a little bit as like earthy, but it's the type of earthy aromatic that you want from a, from a really nice Riesling. And now we go to the taste. But again, related back to that slate, the slate content in the soil. Mm. There's definite sweetness on the front of that palate, but there it is. The after aftertaste, you get that nice little crisp like you've... And if you don't get green apple, that's okay. You don't have to get any of these flavors. It's just the experience or the memory or the feeling that you have swallowing that piece of apple. You just sliced off a little bit on the cutting board. And, just, mm, crush, mm. and that just that little bit of thing. And another really good sign of an excellent European wine or European style wine, in the after after taste or after after texture, almost oily. So just feels to me crafted. And they didn't have to necessarily do anything special to make this wine. They've been making this wine for centuries. And it's so consistent, such beautiful delivery in the glass. Because of that acidity, even though their sweetness will go with so many different types of food. Beautiful with the spiciness of Indian food. 
but I think it would go beautifully with many different foods, many different sauces. I don't know if I'd have it with red meat. Um, uh, it would have to be the right, maybe a squab, maybe that little bit of a gamey fowl, but man, just so fun and easy. This also could be, be a deck wine. It could be that first wine that you hand to someone if they come over to your house and you have little, little easy bites because it's so easy on the palate. Uh, but it's interesting enough that I might save it till the entree or the first big appetizer actually seated at the table. Yes, that little, little touch of petrol becomes earthiness that goes in with fruit. Again, feels very natural, very organic. And, uh, and I had a feeling this was going to be the experience when I saw it on the, on the shelf. Um, I was in the store and, and just looking at the store was like, oh my golly, where am I going to start? I want to find a reason. Okay, let's just stay focused. But it's hard when you go into a store. There's so many things to choose from. I think I chose very well and I'm very happy to have, uh, have picked this and shared it with you. The Peace Porter Goldschrofkin Riesling Spätlese from Leonard Kreusch. Mm. Listen, if you're 21 or over, have a sip, even if it's one of the other Rieslings that I mentioned. And while you're sipping, share it. Share the experience. Go live and have a, have a tasting uh, with, with uh, your neighbors. We are close to 100 subscribers, so that's the next thing I want to ask you to do. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Ding the bell because that'll send you a little notice. It won't be spam. It'll just say, hey, John's got a new episode or there's some kind of activity on the channel. Um, and we're getting there. So get, And also, to celebrate that 100, at the time of this filming, we're getting close. Once we hit 100 subscribers, we're going to do some kind of giveaway. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but details to follow. And uh, it'll be fun. We keep going, growing this thing. Uh, that's a first little milestone. But thanks for being here for the ride. Cheers, and uh, come see me again. Let's chat wine.